Let us begin our International Day of Peace. Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much. My name is Melinda Tremalio. I am a veteran, and I am also the president of the Palm Springs National Organization for Women. Thank you. And uh, we're here today uh, to celebrate uh, something, uh, believe it or not, that has been happening since 1981. Uh, this day was established uh, by the uh, United Nations in 1981 because it coincides with the opening of the General Assembly that happens every year on, on September 21st. Today, there are over 3,500 events in 187 countries that are celebrating the International Day of Peace. That really deserves an applause to know that that many countries are recognizing peace and are opting for peace rather than war and talking about it. I think that's what the, one of the most important things in 187 countries. Um, there's a growing amount of organizations supporting peace, but what can we do as individuals uh, to promote peace in our community? I think that we can speak out about how we don't like war on the planet and we want peace. Um, I think that we can uh, help by showing up at events like this. I believe that we can help by talking to other people about, you know how many people I met today and I mentioned International Day of Peace and they had no idea there was ever an International Day of Peace? I don't know if anyone did that, but I, talk, I spoke with about three or four people and they had no idea that uh, today was International Peace Day and it has been happening since 1981. You know, and there are, there are people in this country that are working on a Department of Peace. We have a Department of Defense. Why can't we not have a Department of Peace? And that is uh, our, our Ohio Senator Dennis Kucinich, Marianne Williamson, if you're familiar with them. They are really, they have put a resolution before our, our uh, Congress and asked for a Department of Peace. But tonight, uh, we are here to honor somebody uh, who deserves uh, to be honored on such a day as International Day of Peace. So I would like to introduce uh, uh, Ron, Mayor Ron Oden of Palm Springs. Yeah. Thank you. It is indeed a privilege to be here this evening uh, to see so many familiar faces, faces that I've known for many, many years and worked with on many projects, <laughs> from standing around the pool talking <laughs> to working on various campaigns. Uh, tonight, I'd just like to welcome all of you to the City of Palm Springs because everyone here tonight is not from the City of Palm Springs, so this is an official welcome from the city. We're very glad that you've taken this opportunity to be here with us. And tonight I have the opportunity to present a proclamation, so I'm going to ask Dr. McKinney if he would please join me. And this proclamation reads, whereas The Well in the Desert is a humanitarian organization founded by Dr. Wayne R. McKinney, world famous for his role in Operation Baby Lift during the, during the Vietnam War era. And whereas The Well in the Desert now serves more than 1,700 poor and homeless weekly with a Monday through Friday hot meal program and a food basket program on Saturdays for families in need. Whereas the well in the desert depends on philanthropy to meet the evolving economic and social service needs for people living below the poverty line. And we're asked through the leadership and great humanitarian work of Dr. Wayne R. McKinney, hundreds of economically challenged have found sustenance and support and have risen to a more rewarding life. Now, therefore, I, Ron Odin, Mayor of the City of Palm Springs, by the power vested in me, do hereby declare September 21st, 2006 to be Dr. Wayne R. McKinney Day. I would just like to say that 
the county of Riverside has a program called Heroes of Justice. And a few years ago, um, Dr. Wayne McKinney received an award for his special humanitarian services as a hero of justice for Riverside County for the work that he is continuing to do. Well, I'd just like to say that the work that you do is a very special work. And it takes a special person to have the kind of dedication to do the work that you do. It's not like we have people beating down our doors to do it. So on behalf of the city of Palm Springs, we thank you for your continued dedicated effort on behalf of those who are economically challenged and poor and hungry in our city. God bless you. Vic Gaynor. Vic, come on up. Kathy, do I have three minutes? <laughs> Before I introduce the board, I will tell you one story about Dr. McKinney that has resonated with me. There are many he's told me about his days in the jungles, but this one stayed with me. I'm sure you all remember Nietzsche's saying, that which doesn't kill you makes you stronger. It was 1972. It was Bangladesh. There had been a terrible war between Pakistan and Bangladesh. Dr. McKinney flew in there with his group of people from Canada. When he arrived, he was told that there was only one other American in Bangladesh. He was a UN observ observer. And the Americans weren't, uh, weren't welcome there. In fact, he was told that he had to leave. If he didn't leave, he wouldn't leave alive. But of course he stayed. It gets worse because the Pakistanis had gone through the villages of Bangladesh raping women and uh, young girls. There were, Doc tells me, up to 500,000 estimated babies that were born out of those rapes. And in Bangladesh, they were considered dishonored. So they were, they were slaughtered. The women that, that bore the children were slaughtered in front of the villagers, and so were the children. Doc McKinney found killing fields there. One day, he was picked up by the secret police and taken to a, a remote location. And this little man, the head of the secret police, looked down at him, and he said, Dr. McKinney, you must leave, or we will kill you. And Dr. McKinney looked up into that man's eyes, and he said to himself, no one in my life ever will ever scare me. I will stand up to anyone. This will never happen to me. That's my story about Dr. McKinney. This is not only a, a great humanitarian, this is a man of courage. Thank you, Dr. McKinney, for being who you are. I know Wayne, he'd probably rather be at home, but I am officially Dr. Wayne McKinney's secretary. I do his emails, I do his letters, and in 1967 and in the 60s, I was out in the streets marching against Vietnam. I didn't know there was a Dr. McKinney somewhere in the jungles rescuing babies and thinking about other people before he thought of himself. I didn't know there were the Tom Swans and the people that at that time I thought I hated in Vietnam doing what their government told them to do. They had no choice. I didn't know that in 2006 I'd be standing in the Mizell, on whose board I serve, helping to honor a man that I have great respect for, with people I never thought I would join hands and hearts with, respecting the people from Veterans for Peace because we all have the same goals and we speak from the same hearts. But here we are. Uh, probably a lot of good stuff was long due Wayne. He's not a person that looks for accolades. He's very shy. I call him my own little special curmudgeon. He's not an easy man. He pisses people off. <laughs> City council, county people, and he'll probably go on doing that. So 
Ms. Fote, I want to warn you that I have no control of him, even though he is a great friend and respects me as well. So I make no promises. I can just tell you that Dr. Wayne McKinney is a man that does not compromise. He knows what he knows is right, and that's the road he takes. I refused to be on the board four years ago because I thought there would be a little bit too much work. Four years later, a colleague by the name of Ann Angel, before she left the physical space of this earth, said, Arlene, you've got to come on the boat of the well in the desert. And how do you tell a friend who's a dying woman no? So here I am, and all I can say is the ride's a tough one. We have a great board. We need the community's support. We need your support with money, with heart. We need you to tell the people what our people are like. We're all close to being in line for food. Nothing is guaranteed. And yet, unless you're my friend, Harold Matzner, who helps when we need him, then I don't think he's going to be in line at the well in the desert. But we have a lot of people that are potentially there, and the more money that's spent on war, the more that becomes a reality. So please help us. If Wayne were to say what he would want right now, he'd want you all to leave a donation yeah. in, in the box. We have to feed people. We have people that we give food to, children, elderly, and we're worth it. And we thank everybody, and I personally, on behalf of all of our board members, would like to thank the Veterans for Peace for recognizing a wonderful humanitarian and a very good person, Dr. Wayne McKinney. Thank you, Arlene. Uh, Ellie Kapuski, you have to leave here. Come on, Ellie, come on up here. Ellie wants to say a few words. She, this, this is a great story. It's a short story, but she has a great story about, about you, Wayne. Thank you, Melinda. Yes, actually, it's a very interesting story, sir, because you and I have never met. And yet, I was privileged to be a part of something you did so very long ago. And I think there's a couple of other retired flight attendants who did the same thing. Many years ago, many years ago. <laughs> All right, many years ago, <laughs> I was part of Operation Baby Lift. I was a flight attendant with United Airlines, and I was very young, and they offered the opportunity to be a part of Operation Baby Lift. Nobody really knew what it was about, except you're going to be bringing babies out of Saigon. It was the end of the Vietnam War. Now, I was very, very junior then, very young, very young. <laughs> it's amazing. I still have a memory of that youth of mine. But, but I was part of it, and I did not fly babies out of Saigon. What I did was I was part of the second team that would pick the babies up, the youngsters up in Honolulu or in Los Angeles to take them onto the East Coast. And I will tell you a very brief story about one of the charters that I flew, one of the trips that I flew, we were, I had a four-year-old. They weren't all infants. As you well remember, sir, they were not all infants. They were sometimes three, four years old. This was a four-year-old. I've never forgotten this child. And I also had a, a little girl who was about eight months old. And we were in the last row of economy. We had the three seats in economy. Now, the, the little boy and the little girl were not related. And yet I've never forgotten how solicitous he was of her when I would give her the bottle, he would rub the side of her face very softly. When she became a little agitated, he would take her hand and soothe her. When we landed on that particular flight, um, it was in Raleigh-Durham, North Carolina. There were two sets of new parents to meet them. And he held out his hand to her. And then he held his hand to me. There aren't many people in this world that can say they've saved a child. You saved hundreds. Thank you. Thank you.
told you that was a good story. And now we have a councilman from Cathedral City, Greg Pettis. Actually, if you if you haven't figured out, the agenda has changed as the <laughs> evening has, has progressed. Of course, it changes with Tom about every other day, and it adds and changes and subtracts. I'm supposed to introduce the elected officials, but uh, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to change it again and ask my two colleagues to come up right now. Um, I do want to acknowledge the Mayor Pro Tem for the City of Palm Springs, Ginny Fote. Oh, stand up, Ginny. And the hungry, and I know is as a special place in your heart for Dr. McKinney and the work. Uh, Councilman Vasquez and I are serving on a committee with Ginny now uh, to see what can be done here on the west end of the, of the Coachella Valley. In that, uh, with me here on stage is Mayor Kathy DeRosa from the City of Cathedral City, <laughs> and Councilman Chuck Vasquez is also. <laughs> Dr. McKinney, we have a proclamation. Um, and I want you to keep this because it's worth a lot because it has all three of our signatures on it. <laughs> <laughs> and you never know when that may come in handy. <laughs> Especially passing through Cathedral City. That's yeah. right. Um, I'm not going to read this because what's been said earlier and what will be said is all contained in here. But we want you to know that in Cathedral City that we know of your work. You take care of a lot of people from Cathedral City. Uh, and you are a very special man uh, in our hearts and, and in this valley, and we want to thank you very much for all that you do. Well, Dr. McKinney, we just, as, as Mayor Pro Temp had said, we want to thank you for who you are and for what you do. And on behalf of the residents of Cathedral City, it is our pleasure to be here tonight to recognize you and all the wonderful works you do for all those in need. For those who have <clears throat> who are disadvantaged and who don't have others to look after him, so thank you, sir. We appreciate it. God bless you. First of all, I'd like to thank Tom and the Veterans for Peace for consistently bringing us all together for such wonderful events as this. This is very near and dear to my heart. My partner of 28 years is a Vietnam vet. So I'm very proud to always lend my hand to anything Tom calls and asks for. Uh, Dr. McKinney, it, you have set the standard so high for us all, uh, it's unattainable for most of us, but you are living proof that one person can make a difference and should strive to do that. I have a couple things here for you tonight. As most of you know, we recently had the healing fields in Cathedral City and flew over 3,000 flags thanks to the Cathedral City Rotary and Mayor Pro Tem Greg Pettis. I'm presenting you with one of those flags tonight. This was in honor of U.S. Army National Guard Curtis R. Mayer, specialist, age 21. So this is the certificate of applause for you. And then secondly, I've been asked to read a letter to you tonight. Don't go away, Dr. McKinney. <laughs> This letter is from Maria Shriver, First Lady of California. Veterans for Peace, International Day of Peace, Palm Springs, September 21st, 2006. I am so thrilled to offer my best wishes as you celebrate International Day of Peace. I hope your event, Welcome Home All Veterans, is a great success in your efforts to promote peace in the world. I would like to join you in honoring Dr. Wayne McKinney, who has selfishly dedicated his life to helping the poor and underserved. Through his myriad of projects, Dr. McKinney has touched and improved the lives of countless individuals, including the 400 orphaned children who are part of Operation Baby Lip, as well as those touched by the work of his wonderful organization, Well in the Desert. Dr. McKinney is a remarkable human being who has truly touched the lives of so many. Once again, I wish you an enjoyable event. Best wishes, Maria Schreiber. Here's a copy of the letter. And again, Dr. McKinney, you're unbelievable. Thank you, Cathedral City. We have um, Robin Thomas. Come on up here, Robin. Robin is 
with Maison, which is a Jewish response to hunger organization. Thank you, Melinda. Uh, I'm Robin Thomas. I am a member of the National Board of Mazon, a Jewish response to hunger. We, for uh, 20 years, have raised money from the Jewish community to distribute to anti-hunger organizations in the United States and in some foreign countries. Mazon does not give money and run. What we look to do is develop partnerships with anti-hunger organizations that are uh, doing the kind of work that we like to do. Not just feeding the hungry, which Well in the Desert does so well, but who are people who are also advocates for social justice, advocates for the rights of people not to be hungry. Uh, Dr. McKinney and Well in the Desert fit with what we do very well. We've been giving them money for a number of years. They are outstanding advocates for their clients. Feeding people, pushing sandwiches across the table is important for people who are hungry right now. But Dr. McKinney and Well in the Desert understand that, uh, Amer that Americans, people who live in this country, have a right to not worry about hunger as they go through their daily lives. He is a true Mazon partner. We have a, I'm sorry to keep you running up and down here. We have, we have an award <laughs> certificate for you. Um, and I'm sure that these, uh, these sort of things litter your house and your office. Um, it's important to, give, to present it to you, though, so that the people who live in our community know how important your work is considered nationally and how well respected you are by your colleagues in a growing and increasingly sophisticated anti-hunger movement. The certificate says, quoting Isaiah, if you offer your compassion to the hungry and satisfy the famished creature, then shall your light shine in darkness and your gloom shall be light in death. In honor of your dedication, commitment, leadership, and passion for fighting hunger, we salute your tireless efforts. The community of Mecca will give a recognition to Dr. McKinney because during many years he helped that community. And it, it, it will be presented by Esther Cordero and Elizabeth Fosto. We'll translate. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening. <laughs> what is doctor? In the name of our community, le traigo saludos al, al doctor. I bring blessing to Dr. McKinney. Por su generosidad, por su amor, por todo su excelente trabajo que ha hecho con nosotros. For his love. Hold on a little bit. She's coming to bring her, her thanks to Dr. Wayne McKinney for his love, for his work, and for everything he's been done for the community of Mecca, the farm workers. Y saludos del Padre Lucas, ¿cómo? Ya, yeah, aquí está, Padre Lucas. Y saludos del Padre Lucas, sus bendiciones y muchas gracias. Okay. Um, Father Lucas from the Church of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mecca is sending his um, regards and his blessings to Dr. McKinney for everything he's been done for the farm workers and the eats part of the valley. Thank you, Dr. McKinney, and God bless you. I'm going to read the, the certificate. This certificate is presented to Dr. McKinney from the Sanctuary of Our Lady of Guadalupe and the city of Mecca. Um, thank you, Dr. McKinney. The community of Mecca wants to thank you for your unconditional service, your love toward God's followers, for the time and the years you served in our community. God bless you forever. Sincerely, Sanctuary of Our Lady of Guadalupe, Reverend Eliseo Lucas.
It's there, it's there in Dr. McKinney. We have you in our hearts for many years. Thank you, everybody. This is the man who put this together tonight with the help of all the volunteers and the veterans for peace. Uh, Mr. Tom Swan. And he has a very special award for Dr. McKinney. Thank you, Melinda. Don't you think Melinda's doing a good job? Give her a nice round of applause. I want to thank uh, my friend Vic Gaynor because he told me about Well in the Desert. As you all know, I'm legally blind, so I don't read the newspaper every day. And uh, Vic Gaynor was the person that told me about Dr. McKinney, and he suggested that I go over and meet him. And I met your social worker. I thought it was Arlene. I'm blind. I apologize. <laughs> I met another woman. Uh, so I'm sorry. But I met a, the social... Well, anyway, they're all lovely. <laughs> but I met another woman. Anyway, uh, but I want to thank Vic for pointing out to me what Dr. McKinney's done. And so I went over there with Dennis Beechnall and Tracy Turner. And I started talking to Dr. McKinney. And he told me he was in Vietnam in the early 60s. So I had to ask him. I said, did you know Tom Dooley? And he said he did. And uh, I nearly passed out. Because Tom Dooley is a very famous person. In fact, Tom Dooley's lover we had here in the Veterans Day Parade in 1999. And he's no longer with us. And so I thought to myself, well, we've got to honor Dr. McKinney. Because I knew about Tom Dooley. I knew what he did. He was on the cover of Time Magazine, you know. And he's in Conduct Unbecoming. And so anybody that works with Tom Dooley has to be a hero. And then I started studying what Dr. McKinney's done. And he is a hero. And this tonight, uh, many, you know, Veterans for Peace, this is a peaceful night, so we bring everybody together. But the lead group, Veterans for Peace, we, of course, want peace. And it's important to know that Dr. McKinney, he went to Vietnam, and he didn't carry a rifle, he carried a medicine bag. And uh, that's heroic, in my opinion, and that means a lot to Veterans for Peace. So I'm going to ask Melinda to read this and present it on behalf of our group. Let me, let me get this out of here, Tom. Here. Veterans for Peace Special Award for Service to Our Country. Dr. Wayne McKinney, Well in the Desert. You are a true American hero. the children than I do by the country, uh, countries that I worked in, in Laos and Cambodia and Vietnam and Bangladesh and all those places. I would just like to tell you one story about one little child. This little boy was, uh, his mother uh, was a North Vietnamese that had came to the South and um, she and his father had separated and, you know, had divorced. Uh, and she married a naturalized American who was a German, initially a German citizen. And uh, this guy ran the commissary system in Vietnam. But uh, on, I think it was my second baby lift, uh, this woman had read about, you know, my first one, and she came to me and begged me to bring her son out. Uh, they had got transferred, uh, the husband had got transferred back to the United States, and it was only about a month before uh, the paperwork was uh, completed, because in Vietnam, you have to adopt your wife's children in order to be responsible for them. Uh, and so they, he had th this adoption proceedings 
and then the subsequent visa was just imminent at the time when they left. But one year later, that little boy hadn't got out there and Saigon was falling. Uh, and uh, so she came to me and begged me to bring out her son. So I told her that I couldn't promise anything except that I would try. And so when we, we got over there for that particular baby lift, uh, that was the day they bombed the palace. Um, it was total turmoil, uh, and it took us a while to get the baby lift going uh, so that we could bring, you know, the Ann Lack orphans out. And so I put that child's name on the list that I had to turn over to the Minister of Social Welfare. And uh, so everything got all squared away and uh, the women in my group went over to the embassy to get the plane to fly in from the Philippines and I went looking for that little boy. Now in Saigon, you don't have the numbers of the street, one, two, three, four. It might be 32, 18, 64. And I spent two hours trying to find that address. And I finally realized I have to, I have to get back because I had to put on armbands around all the kids uh, so that we could identify each one and get them ready you know, for the flight the next morning. And um, I told the cab driver, I've, I've got to go back. And he was so pissed off that he'd gotten so much bad advice, uh, you know, trying to find this place, he wouldn't stop. And 10 minutes later, we found the place. And he was not with his biological grandfather, uh, uh, his maternal grandfather. Uh, but he was with his biological father, spending the night with his biological father. So I told the grandfather, you have him tomorrow morning at 116 Winden Chu at Anlac Orphanage at 7 o'clock, and I'll take him to his mother. And if you don't bring him, I'll put another baby in under his name. And uh, so the next morning, the grandfather bought that little boy. He was all of about two and a half years old. He had on his Sunday best. He had on a blue, blue suit, a white shirt, and a power red tie. <laughs> and he got a hold of me. And for the day and a half, almost two days it took to get back, he never let go. Even when I went to the bathroom. <laughs> he had a hold of mine. <laughs> I don't remember his name, but I remember him forever. And so when I, I finally got it, we had to fly in to Los Angeles because the governor wouldn't let us land with these kids that would bring diseases to the children of Hawaii. Uh, we had to fly into L.A., and then United Airlines stewardess flew my seven kids back to Honolulu. Uh, and I had, when, uh, when I got to Guam on the way, and we were hooking up with, uh, oh, that wild man from uh, the airlines. I forget his name. Uh, we were flying on his plane to L.A., um, I phoned my wife and told her, you phone the mother and let her know I have her child. Well, she phoned the mother and, you know, and to be there the next day at what time we were supposed to be there. So, um, when my wife told her, she screamed and fainted. And the next day she was there and the grandfather, the maternal grandfather, had given me a note for her and I couldn't find it in all of the, I was exhausted, I hadn't slept in over two days. I couldn't find it, so I told her to come by my house the next day at four o'clock and I'd give her the letter. Well, the next day they came back, they came by our house, 
and a little boy stayed in the uh, the uh, car, and I asked him, why won't he get out? And she says, he's afraid you'll take him back. Aww. But uh, that precious little boy, I will remember forever, and all of my life will be remembered <coughs> by Reed, by Dewey, by assortment of kids that I was privileged to be able to help. Listen, again, I want to thank especially all the volunteers that helped put this together. Tom Swam, Veterans for Peace, and also all the entertainment tonight, Anita Roth, uh, and, and the mayor Gaynor. was here, and Vic Gaynor is here, and Steve Peterson for your talent. I don't want to forget anybody, and Bob and John on the piano. And, and uh, I loved your humor. Thank you very much for being here. And especially one more round of applause for Dr. Wayne McKinney. Good night, everyone, and thank you. Thank you, Dr. McKinney.